Over the course of 2020, I listened to a lot of music. Some of it was great, some of it was alright, and some of it was the fucking yummy country remix. Holy shit, oh my god. At the end of the year, I spent four consecutive days and sleepless nights pouring through the hundreds of songs that came out over the course of the year and finding my top 50 and then ranking them. Seeing as this is a video ranking music, it is of course subjective and only one of many opinions. Or at least, you know, it would be, but since this is my list, it means it is without fault and completely objective. If you disagree with something I say, just remember that you're wrong and you should shut the fuck up. Also, since this list is so long, I'm gonna try to go through these kind of quickly, and also I tried to limit the song to two songs per artist. Max, let's go! To kick off this list, we have my honorable mentions, which are five songs that I absolutely loved, but they didn't quite make the coveted top 50, but I still highly recommend them. And so we've got The Prince by Madion, you know, it starts out with that boom, 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 it's punchy, it's sick. Diamonds and Demons by Lazawo, very shiny and shimmery and sweet and bright. And Mirror by Porter Robinson, which has absolutely grown on me a lot since this list was made. Uh, Del Mar by Doja Cat and Sia is fantastic. And You Do You by Dylan Francis and Baby Jake is a bit of a fucking banger. Now that we have that extensive list of honorable mentions out of the way, we can get into the good stuff. The cream of the crop, the big cheese, the top 50 baby, and we're kicking that off with Golden by Elo Elo. That drop at the beginning still goes so crazy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We go, oh my god, so sick. Second up, by second I mean number 49, Modest by Guppy. Uh, is, is this hyperpop? What, I don't even know what hyperpop is at this point. I feel like that word's just lost all meaning and it's just become a huge blanket term for a bunch of shit, making it essentially meaningless. Anyway, this song's a fucking banger and it's a good song to break your neck to listening to it loud as fuck in the car. 48, we've got Levitating by Dua Lipa. You've probably already heard this, but my opinion, pop doesn't get much better than this. This is refined pop music and it's fucking beautiful. 47, I Don't Know Anything by San Holo. Beautiful, quiet, soft, and sad. That's all I gotta say about that. Diet by Denzel Curry, Kenny Beats. Ooh, it's a bit of a rapidy rapper song. Yeah, it's it's a banger. 45, Fading by Shalou. This is another sad one. It's got a little more pep in its step. 46, just kidding, 44, Super Cuts for Jeremy Zucker, good song to hum along to in the car, could also show this to your mom without her questioning where she went wrong as a parent, scene number 49. 43, Get By by Medicine and Cautious Clay, it's groovy and smoothie, baby. 42, Take You Dancing by Jason Derulo, it's incredible to me the staying power that Jason Derulo has had, and this song is super catchy, and I didn't think it would make the list, and then I realized I had it on repeat the entire summer. 41, TD by Lil Yachty, Tierra, Wack, Tire, The Creator, and ASAP Rocky. This song goes so hard, and the only lame part that I don't absolutely love is Lil Yachty, which is really funny since it's his song, and Tierra Wack especially fucking ate up her verse, it's insane. 1238 by Childish Gambino. He talks about cats, and I like cats, and I like this song. 39, Trust Fall by Underscores. A very loud, very angsty, and a lot of bit of good of a song. It's a good, it's a good song. 38, Slow Tie, NHS. This has grown on me a lot, and bonus points for being the only song I've ever heard to mention Rick and Morty. Pussy Pop and Ryrico Nasty coming in at 37. I was here before this was a fucking TikTok song, and I still am here because it's a great song, and I have never been so into a song about dick. 36, Nights by the Neon Trees. Now I know what you're thinking. Didn't the Neon Trees peak with Animal and Everybody Talks? Shut the fuck up. You're lame and this song is sick. 35, Mean by Snot and Flo Millie. This chorus is smooth, baby. It's so sick. And the Flo Millie verse goes hard as hell and it's absolutely a banger, but also smooth. 34, Godzilla by Eminem. If you could have told me this collab was gonna happen and I never would have thought it would be so good. Eminem spits hard as fuck and the juice chorus is addicting. 33, Clean by Underscores. This song is just bubbly and upbeat and fun and catchy. It's just, it's just a good time all around. 32, Fuck Your Sunshine by Lazawo. Fucking great song. This group was one of my best finds last year and they just put out great song after great song. I can't wait to see what they're doing next. 31, SFS by Sad Alex. Sad Alex songs are always fantastic and this one is just especially catchy, especially when that chorus comes in. Yeah, it's, it's great. 30, Magic by Slow Tie and Kenny Beats. The opening verse on this song is so fantastic. And I wish these two would do more together. Collab album, 
29, Sympathy for the Grinch by 100 Gex. One of the best Christmas songs I've ever heard, unironically. And if you would rather listen to All I Want for Christmas is You, then I hate you. 28, Crying in the Car by Megan the Stallion. One of the best Megan songs ever, if not the best, and I listened to it for probably a month straight. 27, Heartless by Diplo and Morgan Wallen. Never in my entire life did I think I would enjoy a country song sung by a country singer, but something about Diplo and his little, his little special electronic sauce just turns a country song into an absolute certified indisputable classic banger, and I still love this song, even now. 26, Mr. Right Now by 21 Savage, Drake, and Metro booming. Ooh, everyone killed this. This is such a fun song and it just, just feels great to get into. Oh, this is great. This is a great song. This song's really good, but you know that. Everyone knows that. Everyone loves this song. Come on. 25, Enemy by Charlie XCX. This was a big part of quarantine summer for me, along with the rest of this album, but that's for another video. Yeah, this song's fucking fantastic. 24, The Difference by Flume and Toro Imoy. That's not how you say that. 24, The Difference by Flume and Flume Only. The extended version was very much needed and I'm super glad it came out because it just elevated this song to another fucking level. That extra time, brilliant. 23, we got Big Time Rush. You know it, you knew they were coming in at 23. That's right, baby. We got Big Time Rush with their classic self-titled banger, which is just so good, it transcends time, and it finds its way onto the 2020 list. Even though it's been an entire decade, it still holds up. That's right, baby. 22, we got Sleepyhead by Knapsack, which is just a really soft, sad song, and the bass comes in, just smacks you in the face, and oh, oh, this song's fucking, oh, you listen to, listen to Sleepyhead. 21, Exile by Taylor Swift and Bon Iver. Okay, so what you gotta do with this one, specifically how you're supposed to listen to this one, is you duet it in the car with one of your idiot friends as loud as you can. And that is how the song is best experienced. 20, we got Drum Down Mambo by Weethan and Josiah. Fuck, this is a banger. I know I said a lot of songs on this list are a banger, but fuck, this is a banger. Oh, it's punchy. It's fucking loud. Listen to it five times in a row every three hours for the first two weeks it was out. Oh, it's short and fucking sweet, baby. Drunk on You by Oh Wonder. It starts out just like super quiet and like soft and then the drums kick in as it goes into the chorus and ooh, and they do boo -doo 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 -doo. oh my god, this song. I like this song. I like it a lot. 18, we have Thos fucking Moser by Guppy and Fraxium. This song was my true introduction to whatever the fuck hyperpop is. I heard this before I heard any Gex, and I was hooked on it from like the third listen because that's how many times I had to listen to it for me to like it. But from then on, I made it my absolute mission to try and convert as many people as possible into Thos Moser fans, and my record currently stands 0 and 23. At number 17, we have Stockholm's A Ghost Town by Sad Alex. This was another fantastic song by her that came out this year, or last year at this point, because we're six months into 2021, and this video was supposed to come out six months. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, this song is completely addicting, and it is electropop at its finest. 16, we have iPhone by Rico fucking Nasty and Dylan Brady on production. Dylan Brady absolutely demolishes every beat he touches, and this song is so loud and crazy and noisy and loud. I would scream the lyrics every time I listen to it, but as my choir teacher so rudely informed me in elementary school, I'm a soprano, and my vocal cords can't handle that level of Rico. Number 15, we have Are You Bored Yet? Feet Claro, the Mural Masa remix specifically. I don't use TikTok, so I didn't know that the regular version of this was a TikTok song, and when I tried to show my friend this, thinking I had found something like rare and exciting, uh, I got laughed at and mocked and heckled. I've enjoyed this song in silence ever since, and yeah, the remix is better than the original, it's not even close. Number 14, we have Shampoo Bottles by Peach Pit. This song is fantastic for any mood. Feeling chill? Put on shampoo bottles. Feeling sad? This song is just for you. Does someone in your apartment complex have the same car as your ex but without all the dumb hippie shit plastered all over it? You will never fucking believe what happens in this song. 13, we have Toy Car by Six Impala. This song is sweet, even though it transitions from electronic to <clears throat> hyper pop into just noise. It, it really is just an absolute joy. 12. Get Your Wish by Porter Robinson. This song hooks me in from the first note every time. 2020 was the year I really started to listen to Porter Robinson, and given the rollout of a few singles from Nurture during this year, I feel like it, the timing couldn't have been better. And this song is really fantastic, and I'll leave it at that because I don't really have the vocabulary to do any song from this album justice. 
11, we have 17 by Pluko. I don't know what Pluko does to his music, but there's just something in it that puts it a notch and a half above every other electronic artist trying to make anything in this vein, and it's fantastic. All right, now we've made it, the top 10. This is what separates the boys from the men, but like, with songs. Anyway, number 10, we have Bummed by Shea Porter and Alice in Wonderland. I love every song on this list, but at one point or another, I got sick of all of them just because I listened to them so much, or at least I went through like a very long period of not being in the mood for them. This song was a huge exception and I listened to it all the time. Even if I wasn't in the mood to listen to music, this song was still fantastic and I was always down to listen to this one. It's just that good. Number nine, Forever by Charlie XCX. I think I first listened to this song playing Mario Kart in my room, and let me tell you, this shit hits different off Toad's Turnpike. Like, really, if you haven't listened to the song yet, what the fuck are you doing? Just go. 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 Go listen to it. Now. Number eight, we have Invisible String by Taylor Swift. I don't know if anyone knew this, but Taylor Swift is actually very good at making love songs, and she should do them more often. I think they would be very popular. Seven, Live of the Swamp by Peach Pip. Soon as those drums hit, you know you're in for a great fucking three minutes. That being said, I have listened to the song at least 30 times and I still cannot decipher 75% of the words. Coming in at number six, we have Silhouettes by Shalou and Vancouver Sleep Clinic. I think the best way to describe this song is that it's almost haunting. It's littered with these echoey vocals that make the entire thing just so much sadder. It's just dredged in this aura of depression. It's, I don't know, it's, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's good. And number five, I have Out of the City by Knapsack. I don't know how to describe this song because I have absolutely no real knowledge of musical terms and definitions. When I originally tried to classify it, I said it was alt rock, so that just shows how stupid I am. Anyway, this song is good and I like it. Number four, we have The Lovely One by Pluko. What I said for the last Pluko song applies to this one as well. What makes this one even better is just how all these different sounds are thrown into the middle of this keyboard riff and it sounds so seamless. Like in the middle of the composition, there's just a sample of a race car and some windshield wipers and it sounds so fucking fantastic. Even though it's just an instrumental, the entire song is just an instrumental. It has a certain emotion to it that a lot of artists have trouble capturing, even with words. Number three, we have Homebound by Drolo. This song is so bouncy. Like the entire song just has this energy, like a really happy frog in the woods or something. Like, fuck me. I'm bad at describing fucking music. Fuck, just go listen to the song. And number two, we have Upside Down by Weethan, an electronic producer and an indie pop group collab. Of course this is an instant classic. Why wouldn't it be? I heard this song the day it came out and I instantly fell in love with it and I still listen to it all the fucking time. You start listening to it and it's already good and then boom, the first drop hits and it's forever cemented as one of the greatest things you've ever heard in your life coming behind only a select few, um, which are the We Shop Music and the Mos Eisley Cantina Band. But holy fuck, this song is incredible, so I bet you're asking, what could possibly be better than this? Not only did Upside Down come through with one of the best beats and collabs of the year, probably the entire 21st century. Well, Teenage Headache Dream by Muramasa, Ellie Rousel, and Wolf Alice. It's no secret that 2020 fucking sucked for everyone for a lot of different reasons, and this song came out about when things started being kind of shit, and it really kind of pushed me through the rest of the year. And for reference, according to my Spotify rap, this was my most listened to song of the year with like 72 plays. 72! I had this song on all the fucking time. Over the course of 2020, this song became my new favorite song of all time, beating out the song that had been my favorite song since seventh grade. This song means a lot to me, and it's just another one of those ones where I couldn't really do it justice if I tried to explain how. So I'll just say if you listen to any song on this list, Listen to this one. Um, and yeah. Uh oh! Uh oh! Oh, you thought I was done? Did you notice I was listening to the biggest, the best, and the best songs you made? That's right, baby! A song that was so good it transcended the top 50 list, landing a spot at the coveted number zero. It's fucking Wanna! Woo! Let's fucking go! Wanna! Yes! Best fucking song of the year! Let's go! Cook up. Hey. Turn for wave, pop it, pop it, pop it, sip it, acorn, bitch, nigga,